Hey folks, Dan Fedor here. Uh, it's been a while since the last video walkthrough of the game and quite a bit's changed. So I thought I'd do another one to help new players uh, get on their feet quickly and also help some old players who may not have seen the game in a while. Um, the game will start you after the main menu on this character creation screen. Uh, it's mostly self-explanatory. I'm not going to mess around too much here. Um, but when you finish with that, you will also be deciding your character's background story. Um, and it starts you off with kind of a initial um, story beat here. Uh, your mother and father are described and some of your initial skills. Um, just a heads up, you are starting as a character who grew up on an asteroid with almost no gravity and little sunlight and all kinds of health issues are going to be uh, pretty common to everybody who grew up on there. So don't be alarmed if your character has all of these negative effects listed. Uh, that's normal. You can buy them off later. Um, so when you're in character creation, um, what we intended was for most people to spend their time doing Seek Adventure. Uh, what this will do is it kind of generates a little story event. You can choose how you want to interact with it. Um, like let's say I am going to start a riot. I'm a kind of rough and tumble character maybe. Um, and then choosing that will generate some uh, plus and minus uh, effects. So in this case, you can see I got some skills from it. Um, I got some cash rewards from starting the riot. Uh, this is like the story description of what happened. Um, and then some of these contacts are going to be people that are in the world. And you'll see I have two new enemies. One is a bartender on Kaleg and another one is a manager on Kaleg. Um, so I'll, I can actually run into these people later and um, depending on how I need to interact with them, it could be uh, affected by their relationship status with me. Um, working on skills, this is a way to fine tune your character. Um, so those adventure story beats I showed you, those are one year each and you get a kind of grab bag of things based on the choice you make that should generally be appropriate to the choice you make. I chose to, to do a riot um, and so I got unarmed melee, I got um, uh, leader charismatic, so I'm, I'm kind of like a leader slash fighter type person as a result of that choice. But if you don't get what you want or you're like dead set on getting a skill that you didn't get, this is a way to kind of buy it in a more expensive one skill at a time way. You can see here like if I chose EVA uh, suits that'd be a three year cost to buy. Um, but if you want it, you want it and there's a way to get it and this is how. Um, Generally, we recommend people um, get most of their character built with Seek Adventure, though. Um, work on traits is the same idea as skills, but this is like character traits like strong, weak. Um, if they are, I don't know, uh, finicky or if they are slovenly, those are sort of personality traits and physical traits. Um, save some money. Generally, you don't want to spend... Uh, a whole year using this because it's kind of a medium to low amount of money but it's guaranteed money if you really need like a couple hundred bucks and you didn't get any yet this is a way to do it but again seek adventure is kind of our our main way to develop your character um, at any point you can review your resume uh, to see all of the choices you've made all of the skills that you've got now um, and then when you're ready to, to kind of muster out and start your adventure, Seek Ship is the way you do it. Um, and what that'll do is it'll show you kind of, uh, this is the ship that has become available to you at this point in your career. Uh, you get a little bit of statistic, statistical information about it. Um, but you can also see this, uh, this is a difficult ship to start with. That's this warning down here is trying to tell you that. Um, and in this case, I'm going to say continue career because I don't want a difficult ship while I'm doing a walkthrough. Um, and just for the heck of it, I'm going to do one more, um, one more adventure or two just to kind of get a couple more skills and contacts. Uh, this is a poker game and there's a hot rod ship on the line. If I win this poker game, I could even steal the key and run. Um, I'm going to call him on a technicality. That'll give me the poker skill and um, a little bit of cash. Um, Let's do one or two more. Okay, uh, let's get a job as an electrician. That gives me the uh, the electrician uh, skill, which will help me do um, sort of installation repair tasks on electrical items faster. Um, and then maybe one more. Um, all right, we'll hack the lock. This makes us sort of adept with computers and hacking. And in the process, I, I gained a friend um, who's a shipbreaker on Kalec. Um, so now let's let's go through. We'll get a 
a ship. This one actually is a pretty good starter ship because it, it's kind of self-contained and has its own air supply um, and an airlock. So we'll take that one, say okay. And the only thing left to do here is to review your choices if you want or hit submit to get out of here. And what that'll do is it'll dump you into the game proper. Um, and then you'll start to see like uh, tutorials pop down here from the top uh, to the left, kind of guiding you through your first baby steps in the game. Um, you don't have to follow them, you can dismiss them if you want, uh, but if you've never played the game before, it'll sort of walk you through a few important things. And one of the important things to remember about them is if you hover over them, it'll highlight the thing in the game world that it relates to. Um, in this case, it's pausing and unpausing, which isn't really a game world item, it's, it's a button up here to pause and control time. But it tells you if you hit space or hit the triangle play button up here, it'll unpause the game. If we do that, you'll see the objective um, completes and we get a new one, which is find the objective target. It's saying click this objective box to focus on an objective. You click it and it'll actually focus the center of the screen on the thing you were supposed to interact with. And in this case, it's trying to get us to toggle that switch. So we'll go ahead and right click on that to select it. Right clicking. Um, First of all, it shows all of the information available to you on this object up here. So you get kind of like a name, descriptive text. Sometimes you'll get statistics uh, in bar graph format. Um, and these are like, we call them conditions, but they're like tags. So this is a solid thing. It is currently off. It is a technology item. It is an electrical item. So um, you can kind of get a sense for what everything in the world is just by clicking on it. Um, and even hovering over it, you'll see it says switch in yellow because that's the currently selected thing. Uh, there's also a floor underneath it. If I hovered over here, you'll see these are some coveralls and a floor. This is a toilet on the floor. Um, here's a conduit, a wall floor. So you can learn a little bit about the world just by moving the cursor around. Um, and then if you continue to right click on a tile, it'll cycle through on that top right corner the things that are selected there. And you'll also notice as I cycle through, the bottom here shows different options. These are like your action, we call it the quick action bar. Um, these are the options you can execute on anything you have selected right now. So this thing will let us do some work related stuff. You see the little hammer here. So that's restoring, dismantling, uninstalling, bashing. But most importantly to us right now, we wanna use it, which is the hand blue uh, to toggle the power. So we'll do that just like the objective told us to. And that powers on the lights in our room and we can kind of see a little bit more of what's going on. And now it's telling you, pick up some stuff, uh, get to know your inventory system. So we're gonna hit I to do that. Um, and here you can see, uh, it's a paper doll of your character. Um, this is where you can like slot and equip items. And then also it's showing you different containers that are accessible to you right now. Currently we have none because we're basically in our underwear. Um, but you'll see I've got coveralls here, which I could pick up with my mouse and drop onto my character, or I could shift click and it'll auto deposit in an available slot that it's appropriate to. Um, and you'll also notice that by putting on coveralls, I got a few pockets opened up here. Um, it looks like I've got a pack of cigarettes and some food in one of the pockets. Um, and I'm also carrying a PDA, which, um, opens up a few different actions you can do later in the game. Um, so we got those items and it's telling us now go get your pressure suit and helmet. It's um, it's over in a closet here, which it'll highlight. So you can right click on that closet and I'll hit the one key. Uh, these hotkeys here will let you quickly hit a, an action without having to mouse over it every time. Um, and maybe just to sort of call out some of the features, you can change uh, what these hotkeys are pointing at by hitting the five key, it'll page up. So if you wanted to get the one that was out of reach of one to four, you just hit five, it'll uh, shift them all up. And then you hit it again, it'll go back to the original. Um, so we're gonna go over to that uh, inventory, uh, to that locker to get its inventory. And inside you'll see we've got a pressure suit, we've got a helmet and we've got a backpack. Um, so we're gonna put that backpack on with a shift click. Um, we've got clothes on and shoes, so we won't be able to wear that uh, that suit. If we clicked, it would just go into our hand. And in fact, I'm just going to put that in my backpack for now. And if I shift, shift click on this helmet, it'll go straight onto my head, which is fine for now, but this is a helmet that is going to basically seal our head off from the world. Um, and all of the air that was around our head at the time, which 
at the moment is fine because we're breathing O2, but as I breathe out, it's going to start filling up with CO2. And you're going to see the little indicator down here start flashing probably after a couple minutes to warn you that you're not going to, you're not going to last long. Um, so for now, we'll take that off too and we'll just put it in our, our backpack because we don't need it in the space station. I'm going to hit I to get out of my, oops, there's one more thing. Um, you might have briefly seen it when I picked up the suit, put it in my hand. Um, but the suit has its own inventory. It's a clip point, and inside that there's a work lamp. Uh, you can actually put that lamp in your hand, turn it on, and be able to walk through dark spaces. Um, that'll become important later. So, um, the next thing it's telling us to do is to visit our ship, but as any RPG player knows, you want to loot the room you're in before you leave. Um, and the most important thing here is this toolbox on the ground, which I'm going to select and hit two to pick up. Uh, and just to give you a preview, inside that toolbox are the most basic items you'll need to do any sort of like really basic work, uh, building or taking things apart in the game. There are more tools. Some of them let you do more things. Some of them let you do things faster. These are like bare bones, hand tools, um, and they'll, they'll get you by in a pinch. Uh, so now we've got those. And we'll left click to walk out of the room. And these are encounter screens. You'll get them every now and then when you've kind of gone through an interesting threshold. This one's basically introducing you to the space station you're on. It's describing some sights and smells. Um, if you have options, they'll show up here. Usually it's just to continue. Click the confirm button to continue and uh, we can continue walking. And this says, walk through Kaleg station, board your ship, docked at the airlock. Um, in case you're wondering, the airlock is mapped on the floor here with signs, but you can also click on this and the camera will go over to focus on your ship. And if you ever lost your character and you want to go back, you can hit the home key and it'll refocus on your character. Um, so we're going to follow these signs, walk over here, and you'll notice there is a loose conduit on the ground here. If I select it, it'll say conduit loose. Um, and there's a sort of optional tutorial step here, which if you want to, um, will give you sort of an introduction to how installing things work. So we'll go ahead and do it. Uh, we'll click install. And now it's letting us choose where we install it. And as the helpful sign on the floor says, let's put it right there and see what happens. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you'll notice when you're installing, there is a uh, progress bar that moves fast. That's like the current cycle of whatever action you're doing. And if there's a lower one, that's slower. That's the overall progress on the task. If you walked away and came back, it would pick up where you left off. Um, you'll also see a times 5.0. Uh, this install process is five times faster than usual because I had that electrician skill. Sometimes your tools will also affect that. Um, but now that I've installed it, you might notice this door lit up, uh, which now means this door is um, powered. Uh, you could manually open it. That'll keep it open, but we'll just walk through it. It'll auto open and close as we walk through. Um, and it's a little bit dark in here. So this is a good time to use that lamp I was talking about earlier. I'm going to put that suit in my hand in order to get this lamp out. Then I'll put the suit back in the bag. And then right click on this lamp and say toggle power. So now I'm holding a light source and I can see a little bit better what's going on in this room. And there's a rack. Um, let's select that rack and see if there's anything inside it. it turns out there is. Um, there's a new tool in here which we could use. This is a welder. We didn't have anything to do welding with these hand tools, so this is actually a pretty good find. And there is also a tactical knife. Um, depending on if you plan on getting into fights or not, not, it's frequently better to have a weapon, although you can specialize in unarmed combat. Um, so we'll take that with us too. So let's continue following these airlock signs. And just uh, as the encounter said before, this is Kaleg Station. This is kind of the, the local hub where you start. Currently, you can only fly around local space. Um, the thrusters you have aren't really designed to go to another planet or the asteroid belt or anything. Um, that would take too long and probably too much fuel. Although you could try. I, I think a couple players have actually managed to make that trip. Um, but until we build more content out in the rest of the system, there's not really a reason to go there. So most of the interesting stuff is around Kalex Station. Um, the WASD keys, W-A-S-D, those will pan around if you want to kind of see what you're doing. Um, our ship is down here and 
up here there's uh, transit to go to other sections of the station station there's um, a couple kiosks where you can buy and sell things that you've picked up out in the world um, these are some docking kiosks where if you have any docking fees or you want to refuel your ship this is where you would handle those um, and there's also this, which is mainly interesting uh, at the beginning of the game, and then occasionally when you need something you don't have. Think of it kind of like a convenience store or a C store. Um, this supply kiosk uh, is worth a look. And we're going to take a look at what they're offering. Um, so they've actually got a better backpack here. This is, a, a, as the name implies, a super handy thing to have. This is like a dolly that'll let you carry big items around. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to be stuck dragging them one at a time. Uh, we already have the lamp. A crowbar is useful if you are going to pry things open, uh, especially if it's a locked crate or a powered down unlocked door. So we're going to grab one of those. We have $845. Um, this one costs 30 so we should be fine. Uh, and a power drill, uh, you may have noticed before I had a screwdriver. The power drill is definitely worth... Um, getting just for the speed increase it'll come with. Um, some of these other tools are a little bit out of our reach, like this $25,000, $24,000 Lance laser torch, but that'll do a lot of things like welding, cutting, and soldering all in one. Um, these battery rechargers are not going to be important just yet. Um, eventually they will be. Spare batteries, if you felt compelled, you could buy those. The Bingham suits, uh, those are like self-contained EVA suits with their own air supply. They'll let you operate for, you know, quite a long time before you have to go and change out the O2 bottle or battery. Um, what we have is a pressure suit, which is basically like putting a Ziploc over your head. Um, you could last a couple minutes walking through void with it, but you're going to have to come back to an um, oxygenated room, take off the helmet to kind of refresh the air and put it back on again every now and then. Um, some food, some liquor, some cigarettes, all important things for a scavenger. Hull patches, uh, usually I'd advocate grabbing one or two of those. Uh, they're good to quickly patch a hole, like if a micrometeorite hits you or something and you don't have time to fix it before the air is gone. Uh, so we'll grab a couple of those and some clothing options, which I'm not going to mess with those for now. So we'll say accept. Uh, we paid 383 for those goods. And while I'm at it, I'm going to switch over to sell. Oh, that's right. This... This kiosk does not buy anything from you. It only sells. Uh, I was going to sell my screwdriver because I don't need it, but uh, it's no biggie. So we'll get out of here. Uh, and now let's go check out our ship. I'm going to hit home to focus on myself again. We'll go through this airlock. Um, and then... One thing that might be good to point out now is that the cursor will optionally show you these colored gas readouts. Um, but by default, it'll only show you if it's dangerous. So I'm hovering outside the ship on the surface of the asteroid, and you can see it has zero kilopascals of blue, green, and none below that. And if you want to know what those are, if you ever forget, just move the cursor around. While it's moving, it'll show you the units, or the, sorry, the gas type. So N2 is blue, O2 is green. Uh, the bottom one is actually temperature. I'm not sure why it's not showing there. Um, but... Basically, it's saying it's void out there and, and you wouldn't last long. Uh, if you ever want to see that on screen at all times, just hit the G key. And then it'll show you everywhere you point what the what the values are. Um, I actually see another bug there because it's saying 293 outside, which I doubt. Um, but inside, um, you've got 80 kilopascals of N2, 22 of O2. That white one is CO2, as you can see as I move around here. And then the temperature is 293. So it's basically room temperature. It's Earth-like atmosphere, like 80-20 nitrogen oxygen. Um, if I stood here long enough, you'd start to see that O2 go down and the, the white CO2 would start to go up. But it'll take a while. Um, okay, so we're on our ship. And it says um, our objective has updated to now press X to see how worn out items are. So let's do that. Uh, and you're going to see a little colored stat bar showing you basically in white how much we call it um, wear and tear is left on this object so the red is like how much wear and tear it's had on it and the white is how much further it has to go before it's damaged um, and the thing to keep in mind is wear and tear is fine but as soon as it reaches zero it becomes damaged and a damaged thing is not usable um, you can frequently repair it with spare parts but 
For example, if this if this nav station became damaged, it would be unusable and I'd be I'd be stranded. Um, so what it's telling us to do is um, right click the nav station to restore it. So we remove that wear and tear. So I'll do that. I'll say restore. So what this is doing is is basically like polishing it up, um, patching up some bare wires, um, you know, patching up holes in the seats. It's not it's not actually changing the nature of the object. It's just making it take longer to break down in the future. Um, so we finished doing that. You'll notice the the wear and tear bar is all the way white full on the nav station now. I'm going to turn the damage thing off um, for now. And then it's saying, use the nav station to take a look around local space. So we'll do that. We'll hop on there. And we're in the seat. Um, this little cheat sheet here can be dismissed. You can always get it back if you want later. Uh, so this is a handy sort of reference sheet if you ever want to remember what your controls are. These are the, the default controls. If you remap them, it won't be accurate anymore. Um, and then a cheat sheet for how you might dock with something. And then a few like glossary terms there. Um, so it's telling us now, uh, switch to docking controls um, so that we can begin undocking from the station. And then we want to um, select Kleg, the station we're attached to. We want pushback taxi clearance. And then we're accepting basically the parameters they've given us. And now anytime we want, we can hit clamp engaged. This will disengage the clamps. Right now it's saying the docking system clamp is on and the clamps are aligned. As soon as I hit this, the clamps disengage and we are free of the station. We're floating. Um, the proximity alarm has just gone off because we're right next to the station. Uh, we can turn it off in a second. It's saying switch back to the nav controls. So switch back. These, these bumpers on the side will let you go left and right if there's another related control panel attached. Um, so I'm going to clear this for now. That just means it'll stop beeping for this particular thing that was triggering it. But if another thing comes into range, it'll start beeping again. If you really want to, you can turn it off. But there lies dragons if you do. Um, okay, so now it's saying target the station. Um, what I might do here is I might cancel this tutorial because I'll just walk you through it faster than it could go. Um, but basically, it was going to have us target this so that we could... Uh, learn how to um, maneuver the ship but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go straight for the nearest derelict so zooming out with the scroll wheel I left click on this unknown target over here all these question marks basically mean we don't know what it is uh, but we do know a few things like um, we are moving 7.87 meters per second relative to it velocity rel v cross is if you were pointing directly at it how fast you're moving side to side relative to it. So um, V cross would be zero if you were basically not moving relative to it or were like flying straight at it. Um, we are 54 kilometers from it. It is bearing 204 degrees, which is mostly behind us. Um, and at our current rate, it would take us 6,800 and change seconds to get there. We actually probably wouldn't get there because we're not on an intercept course. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Q&E keys. I'm going to zoom a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm using Q, and you'll see like a little burst has got me spinning. I'm coasting around. I want the bearing to be close to zero. And when I get close to zero, you can hit the opposite spin direction and hold it until it stops spinning. Um, or there's, um, there's a button here to stop all spin. I think it's F. Um, is the default key for that. Um, but what we're going to do is do a little burst in the other direction using E to try and get that closer to zero. A little bit more. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, next thing we want to do is we want to accelerate. So I'm holding down the W key and you see this little uh, ticker s sort of extending out in front of my ship. That's where I'm going to be like several seconds in the future. Um, so I'm up to 620 meters per second, which is pretty fast. Um, and I'm also going to use my A and D keys. I'll use my A key to kind of get us so that we are not moving side to side. I'm, I'm basically pointed at it and I'm flying straight at it now. 
Um, and you can see my range to it is decreasing. I'm 37, 36 kilometers. Uh, we're coming in pretty fast, but it's still gonna be about a minute before we get there. So now I'm gonna zoom out um, so I can keep an eye on that. Also, maybe just keep an eye on local space to make sure I'm not about to hit somebody flying towards me. I clicked and it went through, hit the map. I can always click again to reacquire my target. Um, okay, so we're coming up on our station. I could fast forward if I want to get there faster. Um, just beware if you're flying and fast forwarding, bad things can happen. So just be careful with that. Um, the bracket keys, the square bracket left and right keys will also speed up and slow down time. Um, but I'm coming up, getting close to docking range, which is five kilometers, and I'm gonna start hitting the S key to slow down. You'll see my speed decreasing. The range uh, just crossed over the five kilometer mark. That means proximity alarm's going off. I'm gonna clear that just to save us all some annoyance. Um, and I'm going to zero out our cross speed again with the A and D keys, just so we're still flying straight at it, but at a much slower speed. I might actually slow down below 100 meters per second. You'll you'll do a lot less damage if you hit it. So, uh, in fact, I might even almost come to a complete stop here. So we're at 700 meters, um, which you could then switch over to the docking controls. Look for that target out there. There's only one thing in range. We're going to get clearance to dock. We're going to accept. And you'll see, like, I'm actually going to drift a little bit side to side. Um, their docking ring is the light blue one, ours is the white one, and what we want to do is we want to get these guys lined up, which they are about right now. Um, the bottom of the screen here, you'll notice it shows like how quickly we're moving side to side or rotating, uh, and the top of the screen here shows us our range from each other, and if I turn a bit, you'll see like the orientation. Um, and in fact, this is sort of a helper to kind of let you know if, if it's off screen, which direction do you have to go to see it again? Um, so we are just about touching now. I'm lined up. Oops. And oh, I nudged it. Uh, so I'm going to clamp. The green indicators meant we're close enough to clamp. A um, bunch of these alarms on the other ship probably just triggered uh, those objectives to come up. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna clear this for a second. We are docked. Let's switch over here for one minute. Um, so we have docked with uh, ID JAJ12. It's called the Improbable Herring. It's a freighter. Its make, <coughs> sorry, its model is a 2060 Testudo Bulk Lifter Mark III, and it's 11 by 23 meters. It's, it's a decent sized ship. Um, so we're going to hit this or escape to get off the nav station. And as we do, again, we've crossed an interesting threshold here in that um, it's our first derelict and it kind of walks you through some of the expectations. Um, so we're going to dismiss that. And I'm going to hit pause for one minute. Um, I've been neglecting a couple things down here and now might be a good time to talk about it. The right hand side is, is a running log of what's going on with you in the game. Uh, so far it's a lot of objective completes. There's a couple things in there like the actions we took and earlier some of the character creation stuff would have been there. Um, but it's also saying you're feeling anxious. It's nothing serious now, but it's your emotional state will change over time. But when in doubt, this is the official record of what's happening in the game. So if it's here, it really happened. Um, and then over here, these are kind of like if you were driving a car, the indicator lights showing you there might be a problem. So far, there's no problems. None of these are lit up. Um, but uh, like if there's an atmosphere problem or you're hungry or you need rest, these will start to show up lit. Um, I'm going to pan up a bit, walk here to, oops, I have to unpause, um, walk up here to the door and then start preparing to explore this derelict. Um, so in order to do that, I think I'm going to take this set of coveralls off and the shoes. I can shift click those, in fact, to get them off. Uh, I want this toolbox with me. I want the backpack. I put the suit on. Uh, and I'm going to put the helmet on probably now. I only have about five or maybe ten minutes with this helmet before I need to come back and refresh the air. So I want to be sort of precious about how much time I'm wearing it. But let's throw that on there. Okay, we are airtight. 
We're going to walk into the airlock. If I was in a slightly more enhanced ship, I could pump all the air out of this airlock before opening the door, but as it is, I, I don't really have that. And so I'm just going to waste air by walking through the airlock. Some of the air is going to rush out of the room. You'll see some gas particles go in here. Um, although interestingly, on the other side, it appears to be sealed. You'll see the gas is holding at 30 uh, kPa and 2 and 8 kPa of oxygen. So we are in a little airtight airlock on the other ship, probably because this door is... Well, it's a damaged door, but it's not leaking. Um, and then we have walls all the way around us. Um, I'm going to take a look at the ground here because it looks like we've got an EVA battery on the floor, a couple mechanical parts. I might actually take both of these. Um, and there's also a rack here, sort of like a, a locker in the airlock, which has a backpack. That's nice. Um, let's see if I put down my toolbox for a minute up the backpack. Yeah, you can see there's a lot more space in there. I might actually transfer a lot of my belongings over to the backpack. Um, that'll give me a little bit more carrying space in case I find more stuff inside. And I could even leave this, uh, this tote bag on the ground right next to my toolbox. I'll put that on my back. All right, let me pick up my toolbox again. All right, so this door is closed and it's damaged. And the only things I can do here are repair it, uninstall it, scrap it, bash it, or access the lock. It's damaged and powered off. I'm not going to access the lock because that wouldn't do me much good. Um, but what I can do is... Let's scrap it. That's usually pretty fast. That will basically cut it apart as quickly as possible, wasting a bunch of material in the process. So if you want to get through something fast, scrapping is your best bet. Um, Uninstalling it takes longer, but it preserves the object if you ever wanted to reinstall it somewhere else later. Repairing would restore it to working order. Um, bash is kind of like scrap in this case. Um, we might actually have to take bash out for some of these things because it's redundant with scrap. It definitely would take a lot more energy to bash this door to nothing. But if you're ever like lacking the tool to take apart a door, that's another viable option. Uh, but you can see here, Status of the door was changing and it converted into trash. There's just some trash on the floor here. Uh, looks like a component, uh, mo like a motor component on the floor, some scrap, excuse me, scrap steel and other materials. That is an uh, HE3 tank. So there's probably a reactor on here because that's fuel for a reactor. Ah, I'm starting to get mild hy hypercapnia. Um, and what that means is my character is starting to breathe too much CO2 because my helmet, like I said, is almost like a Ziploc bag. Um, we can see there's 1.2 kilopascals of carbon dioxide in my helmet. Um, the oxygen and N2 are actually still pretty good, but that, that CO2 level getting too high is going to make me sick and eventually impair my ability and make me uh, pass out. Um, so I am going to... Go back here. It's all that talking I was doing, wasting time with that helmet on. Okay. So I've let air out of the ship by going through the door, but I have a pump here which uh, is hooked up to an O2 sensor over here. When that sensor trips, the pump will automatically pump some more air in until the sensor stops. So we've got air back in here now. It, it's up to 23 kPa. That's safe to breathe. I am going to take my helmet off gives me a breath of fresh air and then put it back on to trap that fresh air inside my helmet and let's go diving a little bit deeper here let's see if we can maybe find one item to take with us and then um, i can move on to another feature uh, so that's another damaged door is there an easier way to go over here that looks like it's a wall so not really all right let's do a different thing let's uh let's uninstall this door so what this is going to do is the reverse of that conduit install you saw me do before. Um, I'm going to use the bracket key to, to speed up time. This is four times, eight times, 16 times. And you can see this, this takes a while to do. These doors, they're not just like drop and, drop and uh, install. They're, they're complicated. There's lots of moving parts. Okay, I'm slowing down again. Um, 
It actually looks like gas is still holding in here, even if it's thin. So this is an airtight ship, and that's a pretty rare find. Um, but you'll also notice this door is now a loose door um, right here. I could drag that back to my ship if I wanted. I could use it on my ship if I wanted to add a new door in my ship. Um, we're not really going to do that right now, though. Um, and I'm going to pass up a lot of these lockers just to see if there's a bigger thing we can walk off with. Um, there's a lot of scrap in here. And that looks like a door to space, so we don't need to go through there. Uh, we'll look a little bit further down here. Ah, we've got another door, but I do see a couple pieces of machinery behind it. I'm going to scrap this door. Um, back on the mi mild hypercapnia. Um, I'm going to push it a little bit further. I know I've got a couple extra minutes. Um, so I'm going to fast forward to scrap this door. Moderate hypercapnia. That's going to get bad soon. Oops. So let's see what we have here. Aha. It's a battery there. Let's see. It's in pretty rough shape, but uh, it might be worth picking up. There's a couple pumps here, some O2 canisters, N2 canisters, and a damaged nav station. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh the air in my helmet before I pass out. And let's grab that battery. We'll bring it back to the ship, um, brush it up a bit, maybe see if we can sell it. <clears throat> All right, back on the ship. Let's refresh. Okay. Door is closed. Go through the airlock. Then let's make a beeline for that. Okay. So we are going to select this battery and Let's restore it a little bit before we uninstall it. It's really close to being damaged, and we don't want it to be basically damaged before we get it back to the ship. That's probably good. So now we're going to uninstall it, and we can do it at 12 times speed because of our skills and our tools. Let's fast forward a bit. This is actually going faster than the door did. Okay. We got it, and now we are going to select it, and we are going to pick it up which for a battery this big, we actually have to put it in our drag slot. Um, I'm going to put it on the ground for a second. You have a drag slot there for big and bulky items. And you'll notice we're basically struggling a little bit because this is pretty big. Um, and we'll just drag this guy back to our ship. Now the chances of selling a battery like this on Kaleg are a little bit dodgy because... Technically, this is illegal salvage. Uh, Kaleg, Ayotimawa on Kaleg is okay with you taking like low level scrap and stuff from a ship, but the valuable stuff like this, they prefer to have their contractors do it. Um, so we're technically stealing here. And that means we're gonna have to find somebody to buy this under the table instead of legit. Or we're gonna have to buy a license to be a contractor and we don't have anywhere near enough to do that. Um, so I am going to put this on the ground for now. Um, take my helmet off so I don't suffocate. And then I am going to uh, finish restoring this now that I'm in an oxygenated chamber. Um, pass forward a bit. Okay, that's all done. Alright. Normally we would collect a lot more than this before we went back to Kaleg because you're going to pay some money docking with Kaleg. But for the purpose of the demo here, let's hop on the nav station. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's target the port and undock. So we're going to select the thing we're docked with, get pushback, accept, unclamp, and then I'm going to hit the S key to back away from their docking ring. You can see it recede there. Switch over to the nav station. Oh, and it was just in time. The the um, police ship here, the orange one, nav patrol. Ah, it's coming over to us now. So I guess we're going to find out in a minute here if they saw us dock with this guy or if they're just coming by to look at us. Um, 
generally you don't want to try and outrun these guys because they're piloting a very fast ship and they're very likely to crash into you in the process. Um, but I might slow down a bit so I'm not drifting backwards in case this takes a while. Alright, they're coming up fast. Slowing down. What's gonna happen here? Okay, they've docked with us. Guess that means we should probably see what they want. So, alright. They have asked us a question. The blue text here is a social move. Um, so Rosemary, this is the officer that's just boarded, asks us if we know why we've been boarded. Um, and then autopause kicks in because this is them asking us a question that demands a response. Um, so you see it's paused here, autopause mentions why. I'm gonna right click on them and see what my options are. Uh, and this is a special conversation denoted by this stakes thing that appears on their info screen. Um, so just generally, we can see their face, we can see uh, some stats about them, um, they are a stranger to us and vice versa, they are a um, IOSEC officer and a civilian of Kaleg. Um, we don't know a lot about them other than what we can see immediately, they're well groomed, they look a little tired, they've got a gunshot injury. Um, and what it's telling us is we need to convince them to let us go about our business without making them too oppressed or scared. So we basically don't want to scare them or piss them off, and we just kind of want them to give us a warning instead of a fine or arrest us. Um, and what you'll see down here are social moves you can do, which are green, um, and they have an exclamation mark next to them to link up to the fact that this person asked us a question, and when they're waiting for a response, you'll see that exclamation mark. Um, so here we have a um, couple options. We could try and go the bribery route. Uh, these gambits are like, think of them as like, I'm going to try this and see if it works. It's a bit of a chance. If they're in the right mood, it'll work. If they're not, it'll fail. Um, and sometimes what you want to do is you want to be using other moves before you get into one of those basically butter them up into the right mood and then try and launch one of those or um, yeah basically you want to get them positioned just right almost like you would in physical combat get them positioned just right before you you know go off balance and actually try and attack them um, so here uh, what's a good approach we do have some skills because of our personality traits so like we could uh, what's something we could do? We're not going to complain about the authorities. Um, let's get them chatting. Chatting. We'll say, what's up? And they're waiting for us to reply. It looks like they're checking their socials instead of talking to us, which is extremely rude. Let's see what they do. And they are still talking to us. They're still checking their socials without talking to us. Okay, finally gets around to responding to us. And I'm going to hit pause. Um, so they say, eh, not much. They've they basically shut down that line of conversation. I could try it again, but it sounds like they don't want to talk. Um, we could try flirting. Um, let's try sucking up. We, well, before we do that, let's see if we can get them to reveal one of these question marks. We might learn something about their mood. And if we know something about their mood, we might be able to choose which of these moves is better. Um, so let's try a mildly funny comment. See what they say to that. They ask us, okay, they're, re they're ready to talk anyway. Um, so they have asked us what's up, which means we probably have some new options here. We can shoot the breeze with them. That's usually a good move. We can tell them to back off, which would be really weird. Um, so let's see, oh, I guess it's also worth pointing out, we have a tooltip here, which basically gives us a little bit of a preview of what this move means, but also what require requirements you have to do this move. So this one is only here because we are not impatient, we don't feel impatient, and we're not in combat. Um, this one 
has a lot longer list of requirements. Um, so if you're ever curious about like why some of these show up sometimes and not others, um, sometimes it's your mood, sometimes it's random chance. Um, anyway, I'm going to shoot the breeze with them. That's kind of lock them into a conversation, maybe get them to like us a bit. Um, let's see what they say. Hey, look at us. So that's a positive. Um, so we could open our arms to them and bring it in here. Uh, we could nod, which is a little more neutral, but still slightly positive. Let's see if they'll go for a man hug. Is it a man? No, it's a woman. So, Oh, they consider us an acquaintance now. And she nods in reply. And she is going to take a nap on my shoe which that seems like an AI bug, but um, they're obviously feeling pretty comfortable here. Uh, so let's let's try. We have a little bit more of a conversation we can pursue based on that nod that they gave us. There's a few replies that we could use. Um, wake up. Re reiterate the urgency is kind of like get back on track here. Um, we are now starting to see them as an acquaintance and our social stats are starting to middle out a bit because, uh, we've been talking to somebody. They're just going to lie there and sleep though. Um, all right, let's, let's see if we can, how do we get them to move? Cause they are officially asleep now. Hmm. Well, I'm going to try saying one more thing. Or maybe I should just switch to combat and I could show you what combat's like, but then that'll ruin my chances of going back to Canada to show you anything there. Um, well, I think my whole point of going back to Kaleg would have been to show you conversation. So let's switch to combat. This is going to be extremely unfair of me to get into combat while they're sleeping, but hey, I fell asleep on my ship. All right, so in order to show you how combat works, I am going to hit them while they're sleeping with a tack knife. And you'll see here it's helpless because they're basically unconscious. This is almost almost but not quite a coup de gras. Um, so we attack. And that looked like a pretty strong hit. Um, down here you can see kind of the outcome. Uh, Edwin Howard, so first of all, I think I... Um, attacks Rosemary Hutchinson while they're helpless, demolished her lower left arm with a finishing blow. Um, she's bleeding now. She's work slowed by pain. Oh, she was feeling triumphant and selfless, and I bet you that's changed. Um, still unconscious, so let's let me switch to combat mode here. Let's try another stab. Oh, she's up now, that's for sure. Okay. Um, so this slashed her upper left leg. So these aren't mortal wounds. These are just cuts. Um, but she's definitely, uh, she's definitely going to act on me soon, I think. I'm going to try one more time. Uh, upper right leg. There's a lot of limb hits here. Oh, uh, but I think they are, it's saying helpless. So I knocked them out. All right, let's wait a tick here. Yeah, they're out. Um, and I know what everybody in the uh, in the astronauts community is thinking right now. Get that spacesuit. So I think that's what we'll do. We will go over here, and I think. Oh, maybe I can't strip them. I thought I'd be able to strip them while they're unconscious, but... All right. Well, at the very least, let's get the body off the ship. Can I drag them? Oh, I'm still in this conversation, so I can't. Well, that's a bug, but... All right. I guess uh, I could probably stop here. Um... There's a couple other things maybe I'll talk about. Maybe I pause. 
couple of things I'll talk about before I wrap up, because um, there's a lot that I haven't shown, but at least this is at a basic level, how you'd get around the game, how you deal with talking to people, how you deal with fighting people, how you uninstall things from a ship, how you restore them. A couple other things that may be worth knowing. Again, if you want to install a thing directly, right click on it, say install, choose where it goes. Um, you'll get like red indicators if it can't fit. The plug in the lightning bolt there shows you where power needs to come in and where it goes out. Um, we won't do that here though. The other thing that might be useful is um, we have uh, the ability to sort of paint orders on the screen. So if I say wanted to uninstall their nav station, um, I could say uninstall here and I want it to be just equipment, not floors, not walls, anything like that, just the equipment. So I'll filter out everything except equipment, click over here on their nav station and that generates um, generates a work task. And then if I had crew or if my particular um, captain was set to auto, they would then go do that task. I hit pause so they don't. Um, but that's a way if you want to like queue up a whole bunch of like uninstalls or installs, um, you could do that. The installs would be here under the build menu where you could select items you want to install um, and then just paint those around as well. Um, you'll see those show up here in the tasks list uh, and if anybody has attempted them whether the status worked or not or why um, let's see power vis is maybe worth pointing out because this is a way to see where the power is live on the ship um, what else I think the zones it's more of an advanced feature but I'll briefly mention it if you hit the N key there's a way that you can basically, um, you could say, let's say I didn't want my guy to ever walk through here. I could select those tiles, add a zone, and I could say that is a forbid zone. So now my character will not walk through there because of the forbid zone. Um, over here, this, this lets you choose who that zone applies to. So if you only wanted crew not to walk through, but the captain was okay, you could select crew. Um, you could also set up hauling zones if you want to collect a bunch of items in a spot. Barter zones are useful if you ever want to put all of your stuff in a spot and walk off your ship and then use transit on the station to go to some place where you're talking to a, a shop and you want to be able to sell things off your ship without having to drag them back and forth to that shop. Um, the barter zone, anything in the barter zone shows up in shops. Um, the fun screen, this is kind of like a running ledger of expenses and income that you've had. Uh, you can see I owe a whole bunch of money on my mortgage for my ship. Um, we also have the autopause toggle up here if you prefer not to let autopause do its thing. This is a shift indicator. Uh, every six hours you basically owe a mortgage payment and it's considered a work shift. Um, so this is how far along the day we are. We're midway through the second shift. Um, third shift actually and then there's a unusual thing in astronauts which is like untime um, because of the way the calendar is set up a day is slightly longer than 24 hours and the time between midnight and that a little extra 24 hour plus time nobody is allowed to do any work or if you do you're sort of frowned upon so if you ever see your uh, crew doing weird things between midnight and like quarter after midnight that's probably why um you can also sort of set up their, their work schedule here. Um, some of their uh, some of their rules and regulations for are they allowed to open an airlock or automatically restore parts? Um, can they go off your ship at will or can you only tell them to do that? Um, yeah, I mean, it, this, this is a bit of a rabbit hole and I could probably keep talking about this forever, but I wanted to at least get people uh, so they have their quote unquote sea legs and can generally uh, maneuver around the game. So hopefully you found this useful. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have any questions, our, our Discord is lively and friendly. Um, we're pretty good at replying to things on Steam and Reddit. Um, you could try on Twitter, although most people don't. Um, I think Discord tends to be the most active and even if the devs aren't around to answer a question, the, the community there is, is usually pretty good at about answering. So, um, so yeah, I hope you give the game a shot. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you run into issues or 
even great things. We love to hear about it, and we're always looking to improve the game. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.